Well, we're going to stop that. I have no idea what's going on. So let's just move on from that. And uh, well, we're going to stop that. I have no idea what's going on. We'll come back to this one. Here we go. Okay. Happy Tuesday. How is everyone? I hope that you enjoyed your weekend and had a lovely, uh, relaxing time at some point or another rejuvenated a little bit, hopefully found a little time if you were able to, to play to create, that's a great way to rejuvenate. Um, I actually did, so that was really fun. I ended up cleaning my craft room, my scrap room here, and um, got a little organized, which we're gonna talk a little bit about today. And then, yeah, I created a few cards. So I'm excited to, to share those cards with you at another time. But that's not what today's crafting is about. Today is I'm going to be sharing. Let me pull up your comments here, guys. But that's not what today's crafting is. I don't want to hear myself, though. There we go. Oh, good. Hey, Linda. Hey, Deb. Terry, how are you? Um, OK, so I'm going to put my comments there. Today is I'm going to share a little look into this, this basket full of designer templates. Um, share a uh, little ways that I personally organize my designer templates. We started this conversation over in the um, community group here on Facebook. And um, I did kind of like this informal video and I thought I would do a quick, more formal video, um, give a little bit of thought processes that I have. Now, um, I always enjoy when other people share kind of what works for them because that is the nature of organization is that sometimes you have to go through a few test and trials to find the one that works for you. And each of us kind of work a little bit different upstairs, right, in our minds, which kind of attests to the fact that what may work for one person might not work for the other person. But it's always fun to be inspired by each other because there are little things that people share. And I'm like, ooh, what if I did it like this for me? You know what I mean? So yay for inspiration and for sharing of those ideas. So with that said, um, another thing that I promised was I was gonna share this little principle. So I'm gonna actually start right there with this principle. Um, I had the team go ahead and put this up on the blog. Um, we will convert that blog link. So um, Sonia, if you get a chance, if you could put that in the comments um, to include this video. So if you don't happen to have a chance to watch the whole video, catch the replay, it will be available. And then I'll also type up some notes. I just didn't quite get to the full on notes yet. Um, but this principle is there. And so for me, what I do is I separate my designer templates. Maybe I should have done this on my phone. Let me take you guys for a ride really fast. I do separate my templates by categories, right? So I have my accessories, which include for me, accessories and tinies, which I'll go over here in a minute. But then I do separate out anything related to holidays, which is usually, again, um, specific to those accessories, right? So embellishment type things fall under accessories that might be related to a specific holiday. I'll go more into that. My tiny borders, which I use for my card making and also little details on a page. They're not just for card making, so cute on other projects and um, DOI albums and all of those fun things. My fun borders and my borders. Now, this is something that I had just previously like tried out for myself, but I updated the printable and then I made that available on the blog. And so this is just a very generic principle. And so the way that I designed it is that you guys could of course cut this out, right? I'm not gonna cut it live, but cut it out. This is what it's gonna look like. I cut out the sides. Here, let me pull one of these out. And I then took a regular just folder right? I have these pretty handy just because I use them for a lot for mini albums too. And then I adhered it on to, once I cut it out, I adhered it onto here and then I just trimmed off the edges to make it a little bit more sturdy. You can laminate them if you want. It did cross my mind. I don't have it at home laminator. I once did, but I, I just didn't use it. 
um, enough for the cost. And so, you know, maybe I'll take them down to Staples or Office Depot or whatever eventually. But <clears throat> for the most part, that super cute printable is available on the blog if you are interested. Like I said, it's um, just accessories, tiny borders, fun borders, borders. And then there's one for holidays because I find it helpful to separate um, those holiday items out because you don't maybe use them as frequently. Um, and so they're very specific, right? They're usually pretty specific to their, their nature, their use. All right. So with that said, I've heard different people share like, um, I organize mine by my theme. So in other words, they organize theirs by um, flowers or arrows or I don't even know. I'd have to go pull back up those comments, but they have mentioned that, right? That they organize them that way. And I always thought, well, that could be interesting, but I'll tell you why I personally have not is because usually when we here at Kiwi Lane like share a layout, we'll share um, the recipe, you can say, right? Like, so if you look in our, our idea books, like at the bottom, it will tell you uh, Sunnybrook Lane, um, floral, whatever, right? Whatever embellishments were used in that bracket, one T, two T, um, T's for tiny in that case. Um, and so for me, I, I, I really resonate because that's how we kind of organize them in general and also on the blog. Oh, sorry. And the checklist here as well. Um, which I'm going to refer to often. If you don't have this, this is really great. It's free in the app store. Go look up Kiwi Lane checklist and it has all the categories separated out here. And it actually is in alphabetical order here as well. So maybe that works for you guys. And, and those that you have had success with like separating them out by more, like I said, putting all your arrows together, like separating them out of their sets. Oh, like do share like why what works for you and, and why it works for you. But for me, I refer to a lot as sets, right? So I keep mine in my sets. Now, with that said, um, I did wanna share with you guys that, um, and I just had this thought as I was going through the motions right before I went live. So this is where I'm gonna say, I'm gonna type this up and if, if, if those of you that are interested. Um, so I'm just going to pull out my accessories because the accessories are pretty much like a good content, uh, or a good majority of them. Um, when it comes to borders and fun borders, um, I'm sure most of you guys are aware there really is no theme to them. They have a vibe and an aesthetic about them. And so sometimes people are like, well, which border should I use? And I'm like, well, are you going to, do you want your page to be a little bit more subtle? You might want to go with Abbey Road. It has a little bit more subtle, subtle movements. Are you wanting to really be a little bit more eccentric, right? Then maybe Spook Alley is the one for you because it has a little bit more um, of that detail uh, components in it. So, but the moment you change your paper, it also changes the feel and vibe. So if you're scrapbooking, for example, an Easter page, then really when it comes to the borders, it's really about what paper you're using than necessarily about specific designs. So really when I go to choose my borders, and this is gonna kind of like merge with organizational tips and some design tips because I can't really unterwind them because a lot of my decision making is based off of designing um, thoughts that I have, okay? So, so because of that, I keep all the borders together they are what they are. I actually do. I try to alphabetize them <laughs> just for this live. So again, we're going to go for a ride here. Um, so here's my borders, right? And I went in, it was like Abbey Road, Aspen Court, Chestnut, and the app, let's get a close look here again, uh, did that work for me? Will these stay in alphabetical order? I really don't know if I have confidence in myself that they'll stay in alphabetical order. But for the most part, all of my borders are situated in the back. And I put those in the back here. Now, before I go any further, 
And I do want to keep an eye on your guys' comments because this is going to be kind of like sporadic. So for you'll have to bear with me. Um, I have this little tray, right? And for me, I got really lucky. I found this basket. It fit perfectly on the top. I bought it at TJ Maxx. And right now, all of my designer templates work great. I can pull this into the living room. And for the most part, I just grab what paper and pictures I'm working on. I take this little card that also has my scissors, ink, my basic you know, tools that are kind of like everyday go-to ones and my designing tools um, to help me kind of kickstart that, that creation process to help me get from start to finish more, more confidently and more um, easy as well. So that's really the beauty of the designer templates. It helps you literally play to create to that finish line of each creation a little bit more speedy. So um, I, I love it. I'm gonna talk about what I do for on the go, um, but for the most part, this has been really functional and great. Um, great for even if you don't have a huge space. I've had moments where I just had a closet. And when I say that, that's like three, four years ago, I just had closet space in a home that we were in. Um, too many kids, I guess. Um, so I just could tuck that in and pull it out to the kitchen table. Like I said, sometimes when we're watching movies as a family, I'll throw up a folding table in the living room and I'll bring that out and create at the same time of watching a movie and just kind of being where, where the people are, right? So that's kind of how I organize it. And then as far as inside of the baskets, like I said, I have my borders in the back. Then I have my fun borders. Same thing, I just have them, I alphabetized them for this video. I don't think they'll stay that way because usually when I put stuff back in, I'm just kind of like throwing it back quickly so I can have more time to create versus clean up. So, um, but for the most part, I don't know, maybe I'll challenge myself, keep them in order. Again, it was really nice. I just pulled up the checklist app and instantly I was able to put them in alphabetical order easy. Then I have the tiny borders. I treat those the same way. Okay. And then I have this section. This is the holiday section. Okay. And this is where I have like freedom and liberty. And I'll point that out. So in these pocket page or um, pocket cards, we designed uh, with Totally Tiffany. She, we actually chatted on the phone quite a bit. And I was like, these are the sizes. And she just said, well, I'd love to partner with you. And so we ended up allowing that partnership to kind of happen. And so this is kind of our current, current organizational suggestion. Lots of people still use binders. Some people still hang them. Um, like I said, I really love having this cart. I picked it up at Ikea, I believe. They are also available online. I've seen a lot of people mention them. There's this, this size, which is the larger size. And then sometimes you'll see the smaller size. Um, so the smaller size actually still would fit 12 inches, FYI. It just won't give you as much depth. All right. Um, okay, so then back to the holidays. But one thing I do, so I don't appetize even my accessories. I keep them with each other. So for example, these are most related towards like the winter kind of um, holidays in my mind, right? I have build a snowman and gingerbread together, right? I have glory and Christmas together. And this is a six by six and a six by six pocket. So those worked together. Um, I have Halloween haunted. And then I have over here, some of the a la cards that came from like other Kiwi Club kids, like the ghost, the pumpkin, and the bat. So I have all of my Halloween haunted, and I just haven't labeled this one yet, um, side by side. I have my harvest and my autumn. So those two autumn things that normally I will naturally design together with. I have a hunt and, and the berry from the Kiwi Club kit. So some of these you'll see as retired and 
Um, I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but the point that I'm sharing is that usually I'll um, put side by side, whether that's a two pocket or one of these, these three pockets, um, which is what I use for the accessories um, that are really helpful. I'll do it where if naturally I'm going to design, like say a fall layout, right? I'm about to scrapbook fall memories and I wanna create a layout for those fall memories based off of my personal impressions and, um, and vibe, then I'll just come in here and I'll try to find like everything related towards that, that season in this case, when it comes to the holiday ones, okay? So that's kind of a look there. <clears throat> so we're gonna stay here for a moment. Hopefully you guys can get a good view. Kind of one-handing this, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so same thing with my accessories. Now I do change it up quite a bit. So I'm just gonna kind of take one at a time here. So um, when it comes to the accessories like the brackets, I have Vintage and Hallmark together. I do have the other brackets back here. Huh. Sorry, I have other ones back here that I haven't labeled yet. Oh, let me jump to that. I picked these up off of um, Amazon. So we'll throw that in the link as well here in the comments. And, you know, I could have used a label maker and did those but again I was just you know I, I picked them up I was really excited to add them what I love about it too is they are really great at being repositioned I have repositioned these quite a few times so say we come out with another set and you end up saying well I naturally design with these often together so I want those to be side by side in the pocket then you can just take this off move it to another pocket and slide that set into that new pocket so I really love these repositionable tabs. I've been using them for some few months here. Um, and so far, so I recommend them. So check them out. But I didn't order enough. <laughs> so I need to order more. Because um, I do have a quite a few more that I need to just um, get tabbed and noted here. All right. Um, so then like here, okay, I have the Grow Designer Templates that came in a Kiwi Club kit, but I also have Tiny Plants. But then in this one, I just kind of put all, a few of the watering cans. We had a few different ones um, that came um, in a few different ones. So this one, I actually didn't label each one separately. Um, I might actually go back and add, for example, Houseplant. Just again, in case if you want to recreate something you see, then you can refer to the name of the template, which the name of the template is written right on the template, which then gives you that recipe for you to go and check your stash in that regards. Also, I will point out one other little insight here. Um, again, on the app, it does have a own it or want it. So you can check that. So if you're ever like looking at a sample and you're like, do I have that set? Then you can utilize the app in that fashion as well. Okay, one other design tip I'm gonna throw in to this lovely crafting event here is if you're not familiar on the app as well, let's see if I can get it out of its blurry. No, it's still blurry. Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. If you click on the image, it'll pull up a bigger version of that image. So if you want to see it a little closer, you just click on the image and then you can, you know, X out of that image. So that will also, if say, you know, you want an arrow, you can be like, well, what set has an arrow in it? And you can just kind of scroll down, take a peek, and then be like, oh, okay, I want adventure. Um, and that's also why I like to organize mine, keep them in the sets, because a lot of that thing is coordinated. But again, I completely understand um, some of those other suggestions where maybe you would want to take the sets apart 
which if that works, awesome um, in that part, in that case. I really loved how some of you, Valerie, I believe, she shared a picture where she color coordinated. So like all of her accessories were all the tabs were one color on her accessories. And then all of her, um, um, I'm sure all of her borders were all one accessories. All of my tabs are white. Um, you know, I have them separated with these dividers, which I think kind of does the same trick as long as they don't get disorganized. <laughs> um, but I thought it was really just aesthetically pleasing. So it's very tempting for me to readjust all of my tabs just to have a section that has orange tabs, a section that has pink tabs. It was so aesthetically pleasing. I loved it. So that's another thought I throw out there. If that's something that would be of interest to you, you could choose to have different tabs for different things. But I really love the tabs. It has really helped when you, you know, you're kind of going like this, trying to find something. Also, as long as they stay organized, I know that I'm only looking in this one little section um, for what I need. Okay. Now I'm going to go on and just share a couple more things. Like, so for example, I have this three pocket one. This has three tinies in it. And so again, you might be thinking, why does she put tiny brackets with tiny tags with tiny notations? <laughs> because all three of these are ones that I pull on when I need a little bit of a journaling thing. Or um, so they kind of serve similar features when it comes to design features. So do I want tiny notations to be that design on a layout? if I'm really kind of really playing with a variety of different designer templates. Um, do I want brackets or tiny tags? So those I often reach in similar fashion. Um, so I decided to put all three of those um, as little neighbors here in the, the, the thing. Um, same thing here. So I have my summer. Here's just another little tip. Tip: I have my summer, my new summer accessory, which I love, 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 love. It really, I, I'm tempted often to just keep scrapbooking summer ones. Um, I did put in here um, a few of the flamingo ones that just came out. I put those in here too. Um, I still have to add that flamingo, but I also have Shine in Oasis, and I actually have those tucked in the back here. So I have Shine a la carte. And oasis all apart, but I kind of still, as long as I have room, I'll keep those summer, summer elements together. So I have the summer accessory. I do need to add in the flamingo one. I have a few more tabs left. I put an order in, but it's not going to be here for a few more days. Um, and I'll add that one um, to there. But again, I, I kind of combined them all into this one pocket. So hopefully that's, this is making sense <clears throat> in that regards. Um, just again, so like side by side, this is a two pocket one for the six by six, the little bit larger accessories. I kept tropical and paradise next to each other. So again, I don't alphabetize. I kind of choose, oh, <clears throat> by themes or um, moods in that regards. Um, <clears throat> springtime and blossom, they both have a similar um, kind of aesthetic. I mean, they're different in their designs. But you know, you have your tulips and your flowers and a butterfly, right? Different designs. And then of course, with tiny springtime, you do as well. So I kept them side by side. If I want a little bit more cleaner fill, I'll go with springtime. If I want a little bit more wild or, um, I don't know, just it has just a more playfulness to it, I think. So I'll go with that one. Um, so it's all about paper, pictures, and things like that, that really help me decide which ones to grab for. But usually I'll contemplate between the two and that's why I keep those organized together. And this one is just like, right? I have the party set, the birthday kit, and then um, I do have actually the scissors, which is the brand new one that we just unbolted. Um, so if you haven't had the scissors yet from previous um, release, it did just get unvaulted. I actually keep those with my parties because I always relate them to um, 
I don't know, Kiwi Lane and Kiwi Lane's birthday. And, and I'm like totally decking out scissors today. Scissors, scissors, my shirt. I got it all out. Um, so funny. I, I continue to get asked. I just got asked a few other times. I was grocery shopping. People were asking me about my scissors necklace and, and they keep, they, it's just a great conversation starter. And then I tell them what it means to me. And, and then they're like, oh my gosh, I love that. I'm like, oh, I'm glad that you love it. I love it too. It's nice when other people love what you love, right? So, um, oh, like Tiny Charmed and Tiny Highlights. Um, I have those together as well, because again, I see them um, as similar little extra accent pieces if you're going for that. Okay, let me pause there for a moment. Let me see if you guys have any questions because that's a whole lot of information that I just threw at you guys. Um, Lynn says, I have those tabs from Amazon and they are great. They really are. Um, I've bought cheaper brands and I don't recommend them. I do love the Avery ones. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Is there a description of what templates fit and what pockets don't want to get wrong sized and not be able to use them? Uh, okay, so Tony, I mean, there is a list like when we first released them, but for the most part, um, I'll kind of give a little bit insight into that that will hopefully help. You know, if you're, you could go through your own set, what you currently have and do your own inventory, but we have a pocket that's the six by six and six by six. So if your insert, of your template is this size, the six by six, then it's going to fit perfectly in that. And so you'll see this one here. I still suck it in, but this one could have fit easily into one of these three by threes. Let me show you that here. I'm going to just slide the insert out. And this one has three pockets in it. And so that's this size. It's about four inches, I think, wide. And that would have fit into these pockets. That's also what I have. So we have inserts that are this size. This is like a four by mm, four by six, four by five. We also have inserts that are four by four. So like tiny um, tacks, which again would fit in these three by three ones or not three by three, but the three pockets to one. Um, one tab thing here. So you'll see different sizes and that's where you can decide, okay, do I need three pockets? Do I need this two six inch pockets? But again, um, just because it's the six inches here, naturally you could fit this one in. It probably won't be as, you know, appealing because it doesn't feel the whole thing but I wanted it to be next to the paradise. So I chose to go ahead and slide that in. And of course it fits, it fits perfectly in that, in that regards. But like this one paradise, because it does have some of those larger designs, like I could not choose to put this in one of the four inch pockets. Like it won't fit inside of there. It would not fit there. So, really just taking a look at the sets that you have and then um, maybe marking down how many of the six by six sizes do you own? And then you would do the math, right? So your own inventory, you would say, okay, I have seven sets that are six by six insert size. So that means I need at least, well, eight divided by two, that would be at least four of the two six by six pockets um, in those. And I believe they come with four to a pack, or maybe it's three to a pack. I can't remember which one specific. So they, they're the storage cards. This is actually the 12 inch one. So same thing. I keep one border to each 12 by 12 personally. So for example, I have my coastal highway. And so that's easy enough. If you have five border sets, then you'll want to get at least five of the single border pockets for those five sets. Okay, hopefully that helps. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. And see, I've already pulled it out of its alphabetical order and I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna happen. But I do really love to have all my borders together because then I know that's the section. I'm looking for a border and then I go look through that section. I'm trying to think if there was some other sizes. Oh, there is, there is one other size. 
that you'll run across when it comes to accessories, and that's this one. This is like a five by seven, okay? And so this one fit the summer accessory. So that's another size that you'll come across. And so this one, you might need this pocket um, in this regards, which is the, in the shop, excuse me, I had it down. I'll pull it up here in a moment. Um, this one comes with that like five by seven. It's a mix and match store car, storage car, card is what it's called in the shop. And it has the five by six, okay, oh, eight by six pocket and a four and a half by six pocket, which again could have fit anything like this, um, which was the tropical size, or you could fit one of the tiny ones in that pocket too. So you can mix, mix and match the sizes. These are from Kiwi Club Kits, so they don't have um, the insert, which is why they're just in there with no, no added insert there. But you could fold the insert and put it in there with it, but I just don't, I haven't done that yet. So, okay. Hopefully that is kind of an answer to your question there. But for the most part, that is how I personally organize my specific stash. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I missed sharing with you. Um, and it kind of shares also the reasoning why. Like, so again, I think alphabetical is awesome. I just know it wouldn't work for me, which goes back to the first comments that I mentioned where organization um, is really kind of specific to the individual. And so I wanted to just kind of share some things that I've heard other people do along with what I currently do. And you know what, the thing I've also learned about organization is, you know, um, I might outgrow this and it won't work. Now, I will say this is all the designer templates. Like I said, I haven't organized these ones back here. I keep my photos in the back. So I keep these, these are little photo tabs and I keep them separate. So I use these um, individual on their own. I have the uh, two photo sets in that because I usually just reach for those. Actually, usually where they are in my cart is right on the side. I tuck them in like right here on the side because I go refer to them often and I'll just pull those out on their own. Um, and then, yeah, so um, great thing is, I actually don't even, I just cleaned this up and I have this whole space on this second one. And I was playing around with the idea that I could move like all my borders and fun borders down here and then keep my accessories up here with my larger um, accessory sets, which I'll go over that here in a moment. So, you know, eventually maybe I'll have a cart that I don't keep all my little cutting tools on. I just keep three tiers of different designer templates that I use often. And the great thing about the designer templates is that you can use them over and over again because you're just utilizing your paper stash, your paper to really accentuate and design that vibe and that feel in your personal um, creative expression for those memories that you might be documenting or the card that you might be creating or the DIY project whatever that medium in which you're using the designer templates. I've used them with felts. I've used them with fabric. So they're super helpful in lots of different mediums for sure. School projects, more than often than not. <laughs> um, the kids just designed their own little journal, you know, and they came in right away and they were like, mom, we're still in your tray. And they took it off. And unfortunately, sometimes when they get their hands on it, it really gets unorganized. But Nothing that's not fixable, nothing that's not fixable in any regards. So again, that's why I just have found um, kind of keeping them paired when it comes to the pocket cards, similar to the ones that maybe I would be debating between. Do I use tiny tags for my journaling extra touches or do I use tiny tags? And then they're kind of right here and then I can make that decision, pull it out. And then usually I, when I pull a set out, I do take it completely out of the pocket here. Why is that one getting stuck? Some kind of tape there. Okay. I pull it out and I stick it. Whoop. Okay. I have these trays and I stick it in my working tray. I put this back into my, I stick it to the front 
of my accessories. This is also why it probably doesn't work for me to have these in alphabetical order. I stick whatever I took something out of, I slide it to the front. And because the tab is there, when I'm ready, when I'm done using this and I'm ready to put it back, I know what pocket it was originally designated to, and then I just stick it back in when I'm done making my projects. But usually when I decide on like a specific set that I wanna use, I do pull it out and I stick it into my tray on my working table, and then I'll continue to create. If you're really cherry picking, like you're not like picking one or three sets to work with, you're cherry picking, you're pulling one from this set and one from that site, then, then that can get really fun. And then you're going to have to make a whole session about putting your designer templates, which I've done before as well, which you'll be like, okay, tiny, I, I only pulled one out of tiny bracket. And so you'll have to like put it back. And which I've had similar situations where I've had to do that. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, oh, another thought I have with you, for you guys is um, on the go, on the go scrapbooking, right? When you're on the go creating pages, like going to a crop or going to an event, um, maybe that's where you more frequently go versus just in your own little space that you might have designated in your home. Uh, whatever, again, that might be a closet, it might be an actual create room, whatever that might be. I've had um, all of the above at different phases of my life. And so um, it's really compatible or, you know, condensed. And so I love that I can have such designing power in such a small space. These, these things have really helped a lot of creation. <laughs> Um, helping me from getting from start to finish often and meaningfully and consistently in my own projects. Um, so with that said, if I go on the go, I've shared this before, but I really um, graduated, I guess you could say, uh, in my own thinking when it comes to projects, you know, trying to keep it simple where I can so that I can get more effective and more done in some cases, which is where designer templates come in play as well. But if I'm going to a crop, I actually plan page kits. If you're not familiar with that, we have a great article over on our blog that's underneath the how to section over on our blog and um, quite a bit of videos on organizing paper, but also on basically our approach to what we call page kits, paper kits, where you take your paper stash and you grab two backgrounds, you grab like a main, grab a main pattern, a supporting pattern, and then usually like a blender. And that would create a two, two, two page layout, a two page layout. And so that's what this is. Um, when I buy my paper now, so um, that's how I store my paper is in that sense too. So I have lots of, I have lots of little, little um, all ready to go page kits. All I have to do is decide on pictures, which I'll be honest, deciding what pictures is a process. Um, either you're inspired by the paper and you go find pictures to match your paper, or you're inspired by the pictures and you go find paper to match your pictures, right? Um, but usually when I do find that, I'll take my pictures. Do I have some here? I keep them in these little, like if I have a set, I have these bags, which we shared over on our blog too. I actually got these off of Amazon as well. I didn't find the link for the team. So I'll have to grab that and add it later. But again, we have a blog post underneath the how-to. And for the most part to explain kind of on the go, I create on the go packs. So for me, I'd actually decide on a few designer templates. I would narrow it down. So say I decided, I'm going on this, you know, overnight crop. I'm probably going to create eight pages. So I'm going to put together eight um, on the go paper kits so that I'm just taking these eight projects with me. If I create eight, then awesome. I'll mingle for the rest. You can choose to go more and above. Sometimes I do. I'll be like, now I'm going to add three more because I think I can create eight, but I'm going to stretch and try to say I'm going to create uh, 11, whatever. 
but usually I'll decide again. I'll look at it and I'll say, oh, you know, I'm just going to choose, like, I'm going to do Madison border with this. And I'm going to do like, if the paper has inspiration in it, I'll choose to maybe do nature or blossom again, kind of going for that flower vibe. So I'll choose like an accessory. I'll throw in a fun border because you never know. Um, if, if you'll want an extra layer is where the fun borders come in, which is where they got their name because they're fun. And maybe a, a tinier version for that little extra detail as well. I'll actually take these out and I'll stick them right into the, this container. So I have designer templates, I have my photos, I have my paper, and then before you know it, really what you're taking to the crop is, you know, 11, 11 different packs. And so that's kind of how I, I go about deciding what designer templates to take with me. Um, if I'm really, you know, if it's a long event, then I'll take the whole basket with me. Um, I'll put it in the little to-go container things. If you're traveling, you might want to, to look into those, which we do have on the website as well. Um, but for the most part, I just combine them into a kit. And then when it comes to like little details, if I know I'm gonna use specific buttons, like actual true embellishments, then I'll slide those into the pack as well. I'll make my little kits out of my stash that I have. Um, otherwise, I'll do all the paper elements if I'm at an event and then I'll come home. And then the next few days after that, when I have a few minutes, that's when I go and add the little details. I'll add a little ribbon here or a little button or a little thing. So sometimes I take the embellishments with me and sometimes I don't, I just choose to compartmentalize them and do them at a different phase. So I don't know if any of that's helpful, but that's also some things that uh, works for me and the approach that I take uh, to even on the go scrapbooking. And I find that I can still enjoy myself and be social, but at the same time being very productive, which is also a really nice feeling. It's really nice to know that, that you know, when you were gone, you were like, wow, I got all of these pages done. That feels really good. Um, all right. Lisa, mine are in a 12 by 12 holder currently, just the large ones, no sets. I label the outside with what's in it. Mine is from scrapbook.com, totally different. All it has one. Yes, yeah, like the binder. Yeah, that also works. We've looked into producing a binder that's a little bit um, not as wide because I do find with the binders, I don't know if you've had this, this feeling, you'll have to tell me if you have a way around it. Like because they're so wide, the 12 inch, like they flop um, a lot more, but nothing unresolvable. If you have the table space, that's awesome too. I like to be able to, to do this, um, but I, I do like the binder option as well. I do like that. Um, okay, so last thing on these larger ones. So like, for example, I have placemats. These are actually file uh, envelopes, like document file envelopes that I just picked up. These ones I picked up at Walmart. I'm assuming they're also at office supply stores. File document holders is what they were called. And for the most part, they work great for the little bit larger designer templates. So like placemats I, haul, I have currently all in one, right? Um, I have lacy trims and like more of the sunburst ones. The new designer template, for example, that just came in this month's Kiwi Club release. Here, the Love Life one, I have inside with my lacy trims and different things. And I'm going to label these ones. I just haven't had a chance yet. Like I did label this one. So I will be labeling those once I get my new tabs, <laughs> my other tabs. I have like three left, but I wanted to save that. So at least you guys can see what the packaging looked like. So, um, so those have been really helpful. I will be honest. I went to Walmart the other day. And it could just be the Walmart that I was at. They didn't even have like the office section because I was like, I was going to pick up a few more of those, maybe to separate out um, a few of the sets from being with each other. Oh, like I have my triangles and I wanted to stick it in one of those. That's right. And I went to go buy one and I couldn't, I didn't find it at Walmart, this one. So I just need to make a trip to the staples. But for the most part, a document file holder. 
it was probably three dollars I want to say like 298 or something like that um so pretty inexpensive um in that regard so really nice to kind of hold your your things together um any other questions Trisha says, I use the Totally Tiffany craft binder to transport and then use the travel scrap rack. Put all my Kiwi Club templates are in sleeves and in the carry case. Works for me now. See? Love that. Absolutely. So um, really taking consideration because I know that that's a common question. Well, like if I'm on the go, what do I do? And so I shared kind of my solution for how I approach when I don't, when I'm traveling, creating, right? Um, and then, of course, when I'm at home, this is just like really nice. Sometimes I'll even be like sliding across, you know, like grabbing my paper. And sometimes I do things like that just to get my body moving, um, you know, turn up the music, make an event out of it, use the time wisely in all of the benefits that you get from creating and just compound those as much as you can. Um, heaven knows that we need those little precious moments in our life to really do things that we enjoy, but also to really X of all the benefits that you're really getting on top of the accomplishment and the fulfillment um, and the enjoyment of what this beautiful hobby has to offer us. So I've really embraced those things. I encourage you guys to embrace them as well. And to not be hard on yourself. If you're like the first organization didn't work, then um, got to take a stab again. Like I said, there's a few different ways. And if you're feeling like it's not working, then it's probably not the right option for you. And I wish there was a one like solution for all, but I really don't think that that's the case when it comes to some of the organizational options. It's really dependent on your your space. It's dependent on how you personally process and make decisions. So if you're one that likes to have all your arrows or your flowers, like because that's how you process and you make decisions, then you should definitely go towards that route. Um, I don't think there's any wrong way or right way per se. Um, and and then of course, even as your collection grows, you might have to adjust and evolve with those growing growing pains um, in some cases, but it is really nice, um, like I said, to have this. I've really enjoyed this cart. It's only been a few years since I personally started the cart system, <laughs> like deciding to put them onto this cart. And it's really just been great for the season of life that I'm in, because like I said, I can take it into the living room and I can roll it into the other place. Um, it's been really, really nice. So. I always enjoy opportunities where I can like sit down and actually watch something, but at the same time, um, finish a project from start to finish. That's always fun. Plus I'm the type too, like I have a hard time. Um, if I sit still too long, it just depends on what time of the day. I think it's just a mother thing or I don't know. You guys can tell me this way. I've heard other women share this in some sense too, and not just women I'm sure, but when you, when you sit still, right? you get tired. So I just, I, I enjoy watching movies and I do enjoy that, but I also know myself. I'm self-aware enough to know, like, if I just sit here, I'll be out no matter how much I want to watch this movie. So I like to keep my hands going and my mind kind of um, in that flow state at the same time watching a movie. So those are always enjoyable moments. All right. I've kept you long enough. I think for the most part, I didn't see any, you know, questions. If you guys have one, feel free to throw it in the comments. If you have other suggestions, um, let me know uh, or share them in the comments, you know, so that each of us can be inspired by each other. Um, hopefully those links, you saw them in there. If you're interested in the principle, it's over on the blog. Um, if you have a label maker, then use a label maker. If not, do the whatever gets the job done. I just wrote mine on there. I do have a label maker, but I knew that it would be more time consuming and I was very limited on time. So for me, I just was like handwriting them just because I knew I was limited on time and I had put it off long enough. 
And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to add these labels. That was a few months ago. I think it was like in January <laughs> that I had to reorganize my personal sets here. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me for today's craft in. And of course, like always, um, we will see you in the community. All right. Take care. Bye, guys.